I found this on Twitter and we will try and recreate something similar. So the first thing we're going to do is model the bar, which is the primitive element of the cube. So we'll just insert a cube and then scale it down until it resembles a bar. Uh, and then to have the square face, uh, we're going to have to copy the uh, Y dimensions into the Z1s. So as you can see, if you hover your mouse over the Y, I press Ctrl C to copy it and then you can paste it into the Z1. So now we have a square face. And then we will uh, cut the bar in, in half and then delete the other half and add a mirror modifier so we don't have to do the modeling twice. No, I don't think you need to uh, enable clipping. I think we're not gonna, it's not going to be of use. Uh, so I create an ed edge loop. I move it. I slide it a bit with double G. And then I select the uh, outer face, Alt E, extrude along the normals. You can, yeah, you can switch between uh, X ray view with Alt Z. Uh, we will add the materials. It's a bit early, but it's fine. Yeah, so we will select the top part and then add a new material and assign it to that material. We'll call the material tip. It's going to be the top part of the bar with a low roughness. We'll also bevel, bevel sorry, the edges. If you want to select the edges quick, you can just press Control and then double click on on one edge and it, it will select the rest. Uh, enable auto shade smooth. Lower down the roughness. You can choose whatever color you want. Now to create the cube we're going to use uh, snap in. So I press shift D to duplicate the bar. And then by pressing Control and press and uh, move in the bar with G, you will it will snap with the the grid, so it will be easy to position it. You can just eyeball it; it's, it's really easy. You can try it and you'll see. Yeah, but yeah, that's the important part: just pressing Control. Uh, so this is called Z fighting. It's when two polygons are on the same uh, surface; they have the same depth. So they, they're, they're both, f f yeah, that's why it's called fighting. So we, it causes a, a shading issues. So we're going to cheat a bit and then scale the bar along the Y axis. So we will continue uh, making the, the cube. By shift, shift, yeah, by duplicating, then move in with control. Uh, yeah, with snap in, it's fairly straightforward. It's probably a way to do it with a mirror modifier, but yeah, it's fine. This works too. Yeah, here I noticed the snap in doesn't work. I think, yeah, someone might answer me in the comments, but I don't know if it's related to your view. So when I once I switched to X view, I just snapping worked, but before, like the increments were not the same. I don't know if you get what I mean. Yeah. So what we'll do here is actually apply all the modifiers. So a tip to do that is to select all the objects, press F3, and then look for convert to mesh. So this is a, a fast way to uh, apply modifiers and then I will select everything and press Ctrl J to join. So now it's a single object. I'm playing with the rotation of the HDRI. So now what we'll do is create the mini, cu mini cubes, yeah, mini grids or whatever they're called. First of all, I'll 
uh, I'll move uh, my 3D my uh, object to the center and then I'll scale it up and then shift D to duplicate and then S and uh, control to enable snapping again so here as well you can eyeball it you can tell uh, that they're like multiples of each other Uh, we will do a 5 second animation, it will be looping, so we only need 5 seconds, it's more than enough. Uh, here I don't know why I started at frame 0 I think, yeah, which was a mistake. You can start at frame 1. I think you start at frame 0 when you're working with uh, simulations. But with a simple looping animation you can start from frame 1. I'll correct it right later on. Yeah, so here I press I to add keyframes and then uh, rotate it around the Z axis, 360 and I do the same for the X axis and the Y axis. So it's rotating along all the axes. The axes, sorry. Plur plural of axes is axes, I think. Not axes. So we got this uh, animation. We add a busier interpolation, which makes it look a little bit better it feels smoother <laughs> and then now we will apply this same animation to the rest to the other bars uh, by selecting them all and then selecting the last one and then control L link animation data but now if you notice the animation is linked when I move the keyframes from let's say bar 1, it will also impact the other ones. So as you can see, the keyframe moved for all of them at the same time, which is not what we want. We want a little bit of delay. So this is the tip. You go to Object, and then uh, Relations, Make Single User, uh, and then Object Animation. This way, uh, the, uh, the keyframes of that object are independent from the rest. So you can move them to the frame 20 to add a delay, and it will not impact the, the other ones. We'll do the same for the other bars. Now we will uh, delay each one by 20 frames. Uh, we will move the 3D cursor to the center of the bar and then uh, we will add a diamond. To have this enabled you need to have uh, this uh, add-on called extra, it's included in Blender, you just need to enable it. And then you will have access to the diamond. You can also uh, customize it to your liking. Add a, a very simple material, which will be a simple glass. If you want a more complex material that looks uh, better, you can just look up uh, diamond material on YouTube and there's plenty of tutorials that talk about how to make a diamond shader. For us, we'll just go with a transmission of one and then lower the roughness. We'll add a camera, press 0, numpad 0 to switch to camera view, and then uh, we'll move the camera along the y-axis, 
we we'll switch to orthographic view and then here we will lock camera to view by uh, pressing N and then tick in the yeah lock camera to view you can enable quick favorites so if you right click on lock camera to view you can add it to your quick favorites I already have it that's why it says uh, remove from quick favorites but if you have it once you added it you can press Q and it will appear in your quick favorites it's faster that way we will click on the diamond so we can rotate around it then you can frame your composition the way you like it now we'll add a background we'll add a plane we'll with it selected we will then select the camera control C copy rotation press G and then double Z to move it along the local Z Z axis scale it up we'll add a material background with a, a roughness of one I will lower the strength of the HDRI because I want to add my own lights add an area light scale it up turn the power up play with the spread see while playing with the spread we get this uh, dynamic look on the background where there is a little bit of gradient we shift D to duplicate it we point it towards the diamond we scale it down and then we turn the power up and lower the spread so it only focuses on the diamond Uh, yes, I will also light the background. I want to have a separate light with a, a different color so it adds a little bit of mood to the scene. You can move the light up as well to choose where you want your uh, light. So I think I'll move it up along the Z axis and you can see the yellowish color casting itself on the background. You can do whatever you like. I will untake the lock camera to view so I can zoom in. Uh, we notice here that the edges are really harsh so we'll add a bevel modifier to our bars. Increase the segment count to 3, then play with the amount. It just adds uh, nice reflections. It's, it looks a little more realistic. We'll adjust the uh, orthographic lens so that um, our rotating cubes do not go out of frame. Yeah, I noticed um, the front side of the cube is is really is a little bit dark, so that's why I added a, another light.
as you can see the bar that's closest to the camera is a little dark that's why I added this light Yeah, I will also add a little bit of animation to the diamond. I press double R to rotate it so that it looks good on the first frame. And then I to insert a keyframe, move to the last frame, rotate around the Z axis 360 and then add another keyframe. Yeah, I added, the, I increased the power a lot. It's borderline overexposed, but I really like it this way. Let's just call it an artistic choice. <laughs> I changed the color of the background to something a little more uh, muted. Uh, so now we'll add a little bit of depth of field. The focus object is going to be the diamond. And then you can play with the amount with the F stop. Here again, it's up to you how, how much blur you want. Yeah, and don't forget, we'll also add a motion blur, so it'll be a doubly blurry. Yeah, with, with motion blur you get this cool effect when there is a animation. It makes it look a little more realistic. It's the way a real camera behaves. And now we'll move to compositing. We will add a glare, obviously. Fog glow, I think I tried simple star, but it's it's awful. The glare node is not is not that good in Blender. It's not the same in in cycles, sorry. In Blender in general, yeah, it's not the same. Um, I've been using Octane lately and the glare there is, is way better. We'll add the lens distortion as well. And, uh, yeah, I think that's it. Very simple stuff. Now to uh, you just select your output and then output it as a PNG. So you can uh, uh, do some post processing still if you want. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something. Have a great day.